Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now with the equity market seeing a steep sell-off, we decided to look at an alternative asset classes as an investment opportunity this year. Now gold prices have hit record highs in the week gone by. In fact, MCX gold prices hit a high of 57,091 rupees this week. That's on the 24th of Jan. And gold prices are now up 17% just in the last one year. So if you are late to this gold party, we've got you covered. Gazal Jain, who's the fund manager, alternative uh, in Investments at Quantum AMC is our guest for the day. She'll tell us how to approach gold after the rally that we've seen up until now. Gazal, thanks a lot for joining us. Welcome thanks, to the show. Uh, you know, that's the first question, right? What are the different factors which are driving the prices of gold? And where do we stand as investors now? Sure. So, uh, like you mentioned, we have seen an uptrend in gold prices since November last year. And uh, there are a lot of interesting factors at play that uh, are driving gold prices up. Uh, firstly and majorly, uh, we have seen some encouraging inflation data coming out of the U.S., uh, which has been sequentially moderating and, you know, giving us the sense that U.S. inflation may have peaked and giving markets the hope that the Federal Reserve will be less aggressive going forward. And as a result, we've seen uh, the U.S. dollar and U.S. Uh, Treasury bond deals really cool off, which have been the major tailwind for gold prices. Um, additionally, uh, gold has been a beneficiary of the risk of trade that, you know, uh, that is slowly gaining steam because of all the recession talk. Uh, for instance, um, yield curves in the U.S., uh, you know, which have inverted before each of the last six recessions in the U.S. are currently deeply inverted. Mm. Uh, global growth forecasts have been slashed down. Uh, global PMIs are in contraction territory. In fact, uh, recently at the World Economic Forum, uh, majority of the economists that were surveyed actually said they were expecting a recession in 23. Mm. So, like we know, uh, you know, uh, gold is that place of refuge that investors tend to take when there's so much of economic uncertainty on the horizon. And uh, I think other secondary factors that have actually uh, been helping gold are um, we have seen central bank buying, gold buying, come back in a big way. So, just to uh, give you some numbers, uh, in 2022, in just the first nine months, global central banks have uh, bought close to 670 tons of gold, wow. which is higher than any single year purchase since 1967. Mm. So, that is telling us something and that is definitely, you know, a, a soft floor to prices currently. Uh, maybe central banks are, you know, taking advantage of uh, the lower gold prices and tactically trying to diversify their reserves. Or we could also be seeing this as part of a longer term strategic trend towards de-dollarization, mm. uh, which, you know, came into the picture post the global financial crisis in 2008 and has been recently exacerbated mm. by the Russia-Ukraine war uh, and, you know, the sanctions, US sanctions that followed. In so fact, I think, you know, we had done a survey on yeah. the last seven recessions and how gold has fared. Yeah. Not only has gold outperformed most equity Equities. markets, including the Sensex, gold has given positive returns in, Pretty I think, much. six of the last seven recessions. We had put out a piece a while back. But the question, Ghazal, is this, right? What is the outlook for gold prices here on? It yeah. was easy to make this case or make this argument a year back when gold prices had not rallied. But now an investor will ask you if the rally has already taken place, mm -hmm. then how much more of an alpha can I generate? Uh, what's your own view on uh, gold prices? So, um, I'd say if we look at the big picture, um, it's, uh, I mean, it's reasonable to say that 2023, you know, has uh, brought with it sort of Goldilocks conditions for gold, uh, because on the one hand, we have high inflation. On the other, we have growth that is slowing. Uh, we also have the backdrop of, you know, the worst of the interest rate hiking cycle behind us and, and, and the, you know, geopolitical tensions in the Russia-Ukraine war in the backdrop. So all of this, I mean, tells us that we can expect a favorable price environment for gold in 23. Mm -hmm. But if we get into the details, um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, Federal Reserve officials have been trying really hard to convince markets that the fight against inflation isn't over yet. Um, I mean, even though inflation has been, you know, moderating over the past couple of months, we have to appreciate the fact that uh, inflation in the U.S. is still at four-decade highs and it's still far away from the Fed's 2% inflation target. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, markets are pricing in a less aggressive Fed. Um, you know, the expectations for the terminal rate of the Fed have gone down from 5, 5.25% just about a month back to 4.75 and 5% now. Mm. And uh, we're penciling in a much smaller rate hike in the upcoming meeting in February. Mm. So, but all of this expectation that the market has, I would say, is not without historical precedent. Because as recently as 2016, we saw the Federal Reserve had embarked on a modest interest rate hiking cycle, much less aggressive than the current one 
only to take a U-turn by the end of 2018 at the first sign of economic weakness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the way the economic situation is developing now, it's fair, I mean, you know, for markets to have such uh, an expectation. But, I mean, that is something time will tell. But... Um, so I'm trying to, to see that there could be a roadblock in this rally that gold is seeing. I mean, is that one of the things that you expect? And from these levels, right? I mean, at least let's talk Indian uh, levels because I think that's what our investors are uh, comfortable with. 57,000 is where we're at. I think in the month of October, we were at about 53,000 or so. Uh, how much more of an upside do you see or are you factoring in in 2023 itself? So, uh, you know, the way we see it, uh, if indeed we see peak Fed aggressiveness by the mid of this year, mm -hmm. uh, there are two scenarios that could play out in the second half. Uh, in the first, which is more likely given the Fed's own projections, we think interest rates, you know, will be kept in the restrictive territory of about 5%, which of course isn't good news for gold, uh, for equities or risk assets, uh, but will, you know, keep gold better placed than risk assets and uh, because it will be like a stagflation like scenario mm -hmm. and in such a scenario gold can be a potent portfolio diversifier. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, further answering your question in terms of a rally, in the second scenario is what we see, you know, if uh, growth really falters or takes a setback and the Federal Reserve does get nervous, we could see what the markets are expecting, a rate cut. Mm -hmm. And if that dovish pivot happens, we can see a real you know, uh, upside in gold prices. That will be really bullish for gold prices, uh, I think. Okay, so what should the investor strategy be, right? I mean, there are different ways of investing in gold. You can buy physical gold, there are sovereign gold bonds, there are gold ETFs. Uh, what is the best strategy right now for an investor in case he's not, he does not have gold in his portfolio? Sure. So, um, tactically speaking, um, even though we are bullish on gold in the medium to long term, in the very short term, uh, there is a possibility of some consolidation because prices have run up recently and also because there are a couple of more rate hikes, you know, yet to come in from the Fed. So, any correction or dips from these current levels can be good buying opportunities for investors who are yet to build their allocation. Um, Strategically speaking, I would say, you know, uh, 2023 and beyond, there's a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty on the horizon. Variables, many Right, variables. the trajectory of inflation, growth, uh, central bank policy, all of, much of it remains unpredictable. And as such, uh, it's ideal that investors have a more strategic, long-term view of gold and, you know, try to maintain gold as part of their asset allocation. So, uh, when we think of it strategically, I would say these price levels shouldn't deter them. They should systematically invest in the asset class in a staggered way. Mm -hmm. uh, coming to uh, the way they should go about investing, uh, yes, that is very important. There are a lot of avenues available today, which can be confusing. But uh, investors shouldn't underestimate the instrument they, uh, you know, um, choose to take exposure to gold because that could make all the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, like we all know, physical gold is the preferred gold investment avenue in the country because of its simplicity, convenience. But, you know, it comes with its own set of concerns, like purity issues. I mean, as recently as this week, we've seen uh, the Bureau of Indian Standards has seized gold, which was incorrectly marked as, you know, hallmark certified. Mm. Uh, price efficiencies are always a problem with physical gold because uh, we know about, you know, high retail margins and making mm. costs and lower resale value. So all of this is eating into investor returns. Even safety and storage, right? I mean, 100%. at a time when you have the... Uh the avenues of gold ETFs and sovereign gold bonds, why would you want to take that risk of storing gold physically? Definitely. I guess that's another concern as well. Right. So that's when, you know, we're seeing more and more informed and sophisticated investors make the move towards mm. financial avenues, like you mentioned, sovereign gold bonds, gold ETFs, gold mutual funds. Mm. Uh, much more price efficient, I would say, um, you know, uh, uh, like, for example, gold ETFs uh, backed by 24 karat physical gold. So the purity concerns are out of the picture. Mm. Uh, in fact, you can invest in gold at denominations as low as 0 0.01 grams, mm. you know, through gold ETFs. I mean, where's physical gold giving you, you know, that kind of an option? And of course, when it comes to returns, uh, financial avenues like gold ETFs can definitely optimize your returns because they're passing on, you know, uh, benefits of wholesale prices to retail investors. Uh, they have, you know, a mechanism for GST offset, which they pass on to the investor. Uh, they trade very close to market prices on the exchanges, extremely liquid. So all of this actually helps in optimizing the investor's returns. And that's why, uh, you know, slowly and steadily we're seeing gold ETFs become 
uh, the preferred investment avenue. Okay, in fact, we have some of those lines running there while you're speaking about the benefits of investing in gold ETF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very short break, but don't go anywhere. This is the interesting part of the discussion where we try and compare gold ETFs versus sovereign gold bonds versus physical gold. In case you are confused where to put your money, uh, come back in just a bit and we'll tell you more with our guests. Well, if you feel like you've missed out on the rally in gold and at a time when equity markets are going through so much stress, you want to diversify your portfolio a bit, we are here to sort you out. We're speaking about the potential in gold and how you should be investing in it. So that's our financial tip of the week and we're going to talk about that. With gold prices hitting all-time highs, we tell you the two good ways. I mean, you may call it the best ways, but it is a good way to invest in gold. One is sovereign gold bonds. The SGBs are government securities denominated in grams of gold. Now, they are substitutes for holding physical gold, investors have to pay the issue price in cash and the bonds will be redeemed in cash on maturity. Now, the bond is issued by the Reserve Bank of India on behalf of the Government of India and it's a great way to invest in gold since it is A, non-physical and B, it offers interest over and above the gold price appreciation. Now, one of the biggest benefits of SGBs is that it offers a good hedge to your overall portfolio during tough times. SGBs are tax-free, which is not the same as when purchasing physical gold. One must, of course, pay GST when you purchase is actual gold and sovereign gold bonds have an eight year maturity duration the capital gains tax is not applicable however if you exit after five years the capital gains tax will be applicable the other way to buy gold is through gold ETS which we were just discussing a while back gold exchange traded funds is a commodity based mutual fund that invests in assets like gold now these exchange traded funds perform like individual stocks and are traded similarly on the stock exchange Major advantages of gold ETFs include easier trading, purchasing and selling of gold ETFs is similar to any other equity fund and much easier to liquidate. There are no entry or exit loads which means that there are zero additional charges when purchasing or selling these funds and there are tax benefits. There's only capital gains tax on gold ETFs. There's no wealth tax like in physical gold. There's no STT or VAT to be paid. Uh, usage as a collateral and gold ETFs, of course, can be used as a collateral as well while taking a loan. So that is the question, right? I mean, you spoke about gold ETFs, but there are SGBs as well. Uh, physical is out of the question. I guess you said that there are a lot of concerns there. But in digital gold, what's the best way to start? Sure. So um, in the digital gold avenue uh, space, we have SGBs and ETFs and uh, both of them are slowly picking up and you know getting investor attention. Uh, SGBs uh, or sovereign gold bonds uh, are actually preferred by investors uh, because of um, the interest that they pay annually and for the fact that they are tax free. You know uh, the, the capital gains on long term are tax free. Uh, but uh, just uh, you know where they actually fall short. You know is something I would point out is uh, first of all they come with a lock in period like you mentioned of about eight years. And even their secondary market liquidity uh, is is on the lower side because you know they trade only in their specific tranches. Mm -hmm. So uh, from a liquidity perspective and from a portfolio perspective, because you know gold is part of our asset allocation and how we you know rebalance our uh, portfolios to match our asset allocation based on whether prices have gone up or down. That is something you will not be able to do with sovereign gold bonds because of the lock-in periods mm -hmm. and the low liquidity. Mm -hmm. So in this regard, you know, um, if you're looking for long-term investment with liquidity, that's where gold ETFs uh, score above sovereign gold bonds, I would say. Um, like you, and you mentioned all the benefits, they trade on the exchanges, extremely liquid mm -hmm. on NSC, BSC both, and uh, very close to market prices. So you, you're not worried about trading or selling your gold ETF units at a discount. So again, from a liquidity and portfolio perspective mm -hmm. and long-term investment, gold ETFs, uh, I believe, uh, will score above sovereign gold bonds. But do sovereign gold bonds uh, score above physical gold? Because oh, see, again, 100%. sovereign gold bonds have uh, a lock-in period and physical gold doesn't. Sure. So in a market like this where you, know, you never know when you may need the money and equities are not doing well, right. do you think it's still better to have physical gold over sovereign gold bonds? Uh, you know, uh, I think it's very important that uh, we start bifurcating the uses of physical gold and digital or financial gold. And I believe physical gold should only be used for uh, or purchased for ornamental and gifting purposes, which is, of course, part of our traditions, culture, festivals. No one's touching that. But when you're talking about investment, you know, what's important? Liquidity, price efficiency, 
you know, safety, purity, and all these things are available in financial avenues. Mm -hmm. So SGBs versus physical gold really comes down to uh, what is the, you know, investment tenure of the investor. If he's looking for, you know, very ready liquidity, of course, uh, physical gold would score above that. But on all other aspects, uh, you know, financial avenues over physical avenue, 100%. Okay, so ETFs first, right on top, and then sovereign gold bonds, sure. and your last resort would should be, be physical, physical gold. gold, and that too only for ornamental purposes or gifting, sure. uh, you know, like our culture teaches us, right? Got that. Uh, so, you know, let's talk a little bit again about how gold is an ideal, or is gold an ideal inflation hedge? Uh, this also, this question also, you know, uh, marks attention because we're at a time when perhaps inflation is cooling off now. I mean, the worst right. of the inflation fears perhaps are behind us. Sure. At this point, how do you approach gold? Right. So, um, you know, just to give a background as to why gold is, you know, often touted as uh, an inflation hedge is because of its historical role of, you know, being a means of exchange. Right. So because of that, in today's feared currency system, also, it is viewed as an alternative monetary asset. Mm -hmm. Right. So when uh, the demand supply of, say, feared currencies goes up or down compared to the fixed supply of gold, you know, that's what drives gold prices over longer periods of time. So in the current regime, for example, over the last decade or so, we have seen easy money policies. Right. Which means the supply of feared currencies has been much more which has led to them depreciating and gold actually, you know, benefiting. So that's where this uh, whole uh, inflation hedge uh, title actually comes from. Mm. Uh, but if you look at the numbers, um, in INR terms, I think over the last 30 years or so, gold has given an annualized return of about 10%. Mm. Even in the last decade, the, uh, the number would range somewhere, you know, in, in that range. Uh, whereas CPI inflation or inflation that, you know, uh, we t track we domestically, did would be averaging around six, six and a half percent. So it's it's very evident that, you know, our, I think it's reasonable to expect gold to keep pace, you know, with uh, real increases in cost of living, but over longer periods of time. Mm. If you're looking at it, uh, you know, okay, uh, inflation was, you know, rallying in 2020 and 2021 and gold really didn't you know, do its bit. that's the case with equities as well, right? Over longer periods of time, equities we sort can. of outperforms and beats inflation. Sure. In the shorter term, you can burn your fingers badly. So I guess with any kind of financial asset, that is the, the worry. Got that. Right. Uh, but let's get back to gold ETFs, right? Because yeah. we finally come to a conclusion that that's the best form of investing in gold. Um, a, are there more legs to the current rally that we're seeing? And B, if I want to start investing right now in gold ETFs, what's the procedure? Is it as simple as investing in a mutual fund? Do you do an SIP in gold ETFs? What's the best way? Uh, so the short answer to uh, whether I think there is more legs to this rally, I think would be yes. Uh, the long answer, uh, like I already spoke about, there are all, uh, I mean, the macroeconomic fundamentals are looking supportive of gold. And of course, there are a lot of wild cards that, uh, you know, are difficult to factor in. Like, I mean, we could be looking at uh, a resurgence in COVID-19 or an escalation of the Russia-Ukraine war or a sovereign debt crisis that would emerge. So any of this, there are so many wild cards and so many moving parts, you know, in this scenario um, that uh, uh, gold, I mean, looks like a portfolio must have. I mean, and there's no, uh, you know, doubts about that. Uh, and... Um, about you know gold ETFs and right. how to invest. I sure. suppose I'm a you know I'm I'm I haven't ever done it before. I'm like a rookie and I want to sure. start investing in gold ETFs. What's the best way to approach so, it? So gold ETF units are like share units. So just like how you trade in uh, shares of equity uh, of stocks, that's how you will be buying and selling uh, units of the gold ETF. Okay. So for that you need a DMAT account and. Uh, that's that's about it. Mm. And if you do not want a DMAT, uh, want to open a DMAT account or go through that, there's always the mutual fund route of investing in gold ETFs. Mm. These are gold mutual funds. They invest in the gold ETFs on your behalf. Mm. So just as simply as you open any folio, you can get started with your gold mutual fund. You can do an SIP in that for you know as low as rupees five hundred, mm. and enjoy all the benefits of the gold ETF okay. with. Uh, you know, a slight added expense ratio, of course. Okay, a slightly higher expense ratio. Got that. Uh, since you also, apart from uh, gold, you also look at other alternate assets. You look at, uh, uh, you know, equity funds as well. At your fund house, what is the recommendation now in a volatile environment like this? How much should the allocation be to gold? How much should be to alternate assets? There's also REITs, there's invits, uh, there's debt, there's fixed income. Uh, what is the, uh, you know, best asset allocation for 2023? 
So, uh, I mean, the, uh, the answer to this actually comes down to each investor and, of, of course, course uh, you know, the risk appetite and investment objective and time horizon. But uh, I think uh, uh, currently, given the uncertainty that we're seeing uh, and the market volatility that we're expecting, even though, uh, you know, structurally Indian equities are looking good, they are prone and vulnerable to, uh, you know, external mm. uh, uh, shocks. So, um, an asset allocation of about 80% in equity and 20% in gold. Uh, this is obviously after keeping your emergency expenses of about 6 to 12 months aside. So an 80-20 allocation between equity and gold is, I think, uh, uh, you know, a reasonable. Uh, a reasonable asset allocation to have in the current uh, environment. Okay, it was a pleasure, Ghazal. Thanks a lot for joining us and speaking to us and telling us how to approach gold in this environment, especially as uh, perhaps a good hedge against inflation, perhaps a, a, you know, a great tool to beat the blues that we're seeing in the equity markets as well. And gold at record highs, so it was the big headline this week. Thanks a lot for watching uh, Smart Money. And in case you have any feedback, Back, please write to us. We love receiving feedback from you. Have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday.